Hi, let's get started by asking you a question. What percentage of your time is spent on the following activities? I'm going to give you a few seconds to pause the video, think about it, give a response and then we'll proceed further. Okay, I assume that you have taken time to answer this question. Now, before we look at what your answer is, what we're going to do is to look at a response from nearly 1,700 people across frontline, middle management and senior management, a survey which was done by HBR. Nearly 54%, 54% of the respondents said that bulk of their time goes into administrative activities. Isn't that a concern? A large percentage of our time goes into administration activities rather than activities which are strategizing, which are relating to innovating, which are helping us to build relationships with our uh, prospects and with our stakeholders. So what do we mean by administrative activities? I'm sure all of you know, bulk of it is going to go into firefighting, troubleshooting, right? You're, go you're walking into the office and someone calls you and then you spend half of the day just trying to figure out what's really happened over the night shift or it could be about checking, verifying, scrutinizing, just being behind someone else to find out is he doing it rightly and that's part of your job as well. And sometimes we have to stop there, correct the situation, put it back into normalcy so you get into doing things as well. So this is what we mean by time spent on administrative activities. The question we have to ask is, should we spend our time in this activity or not? Of course, yes, but should we spend 54% of our time in this activity? What negative impact that does this have on us and does it have on the organization? This results in unplanned and disrupting activities, right? You plan something for the day, it's a Monday and you're planned for certain things. So you walk into the office and someone screams and says, Oh, you know what? This has stopped last shift. I want you to come here, help me because you seem to be the expert on this or you're the big boss. So you figure out what needs to be done and you spend half of the day trying to figure that out. So unplanned activities disrupting your flow is one of the biggest negative impact. Followed by inappropriateness of your role. Should you be actually getting involved in this activity or not? Maybe you're too senior, you may be capable in fixing this, but are you necessarily the right person to do this job? So we are talking about Muda here. Of course, such disruptions demotivate the team as well. People start losing their engagement levels and their morale as frequent disruptions happen, frequent interventions happen from their managers. And think about the impact it has on the customer, it happens on the delivery, etc. So the whole ecosystem gets impacted if administrative activities are high. Now, what is the right percentage? I'm going to talk about it as we move forward. But as a rule of thumb, I should say that it should not be anything more than 20, 25% at the mid level and somewhere around 5% at the senior level. Now let's talk about a system, a system which has no intervention whatsoever from the manager. Any system which is capable of delivering a high level of output over a period of time when left unattended, when left unmonitored, naturally deteriorates and the performance comes down. That is the law of the nature. You and I cannot change that. So a percentage of our effort certainly needs to go in making sure that whatever we have achieved in the past, the performance level that we have achieved in the past is sustained. And when we do such an effort, what we would see is a, a swing up and a swing down or something like a sawtooth kind of a pattern in the performance, right? Things would improve when you're overseeing and when you lose sight, things would deteriorate. Again, there would be a red flag. You would intervene in whatever manner it is. It could be in terms of review or it could be in terms of actually getting and doing things and then things would again improve. So a cyclical pattern of performance is followed in any process which involves monitoring. But on the other hand, if you are going to use 
standard work and if the standard work is well defined in your process then you would expect that the variation which happens that is the peak performance and the dip in performance would certainly happen even when standard work is defined but the quantum of variation would be much lesser so you would see that the process is gentle and the performance is more or less around the same level so there is consistency of performance so that brings us to one of the biggest advantages of standard work if you have standard work defined for yourself if you have standard work defined for your team members then you can assure that the level of performance would be more or level consistent over a period of time in fact organizations which have such a standard work defined see lesser disruptions in work and the output as i said would be consistent and only interventions which are really necessary will needs to be done by the manager which in another way is a tool for empowering your employees to do their job you don't need to keep sticking your nose into their business and they don't need to be looking up to say that who is going to come and save me they will be empowered to take decisions they will be empowered to run their show because they know they are entitled to do so so standard work while in the principle of lean seems to be more of a technical thing more seems like a documentation of what somebody needs to know what somebody needs to do etc in principle it is one of the big pillars which would support a lean culture in your organization so with that note i'm going to wrap up this introductory lecture as we move forward as i mentioned earlier in this course we will learn how to create standard work for workmen that is to say for team members and we would also talk about how to create standard work for leaders who are senior members in the organization starting right from the ceo so with that note i'm going to welcome you again to this course and i'm going to wrap up this lecture thank you